Welcome to Mom Matters. I'm your host, Alyssa DeVere. In the next 10 easy to watch minutes, we're gonna give you some practical tips for more productive parenting. We're at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and we are talking today about kids and concussions. And we're very lucky we have Dr. Mark Proctor here. He is with the Department of Neurosurgery. Yes, we are talking about brain surgery. I love the fact that we're getting very serious here, but I know we're gonna have a good time with this conversation because um, Dr. Proctor is both here at Brigham and Women's as well as Children's Boston, and he's an expert in concussion management, and I know with all the sports that our children are in and even just playing around, this is probably one of the most common things parents say is, oh my gosh, did they have a concussion? I don't even know if I, what a concussion really is. Maybe you can start by telling us that. Sure. So, you know, concussion has been defined different ways over the past 20 to 30 years, but essentially what it is is a mild brain injury that is suffered usually as a result of the, the brain whipping around inside the skull. So it's not even necessarily that the that you need your head to hit something, but it's the fact that our brain is has a little room between the brain and the skull, and if we fall in a certain way or if our head is rocked in a certain way, such as a whiplash, the brain can bounce around inside the skull and suffer a chemical reaction that causes changes in the way someone behaves. It could be very brief with the symptoms lasting, you know, literally minutes, or it can go on for, for months at a time. Uh, those symptoms will, will persist in, uh, in a child. Um, Is it something you say when you fall, you whiplash, what about like roller coasters or other intense movement type things, can that also bring on a concussion? It's a good question. I mean, it, I, I think there's probably more concern about roller coasters than actual injuries in roller coasters because in general, if you think about when you're on a roller coaster, your head is sort of stable against the, the seat. So although you're going very quickly, it's not often that you're rapidly stopping and your head is whipping forward. Okay. So you're much more likely to suffer a concussion either from something like a fall, uh, a car accident, or really where these, you know, epidemic, so to speak, these days is in sports. Okay. And what are the symptoms? How do you know if your child actually has a concussion or is suspected? It, uh, the things that you might see at the time a concussion is suffered might include uh, a loss of consciousness, so the child passing out. And some people sort of thought, well, if they didn't pass out, they didn't have a concussion. But the truth is you can have a pretty serious concussion without ever losing consciousness. So don't, don't put too much on the loss of consciousness. Uh, let's say just in the, in the arena of sports, you know, if, a, if an athlete has a concussion, they may appear to be confused on the field. They may actually run the wrong way with a ball. May just look dazed or out of it, their balance might be off. Um, or they may actually look pretty good and just have a bad headache. Oh, and really? then you have to rely on them to tell you, which is a problem because the, the young athletes don't want to tell you they had a concussion and be pulled out of the game. Oh my goodness. All right, so uh, if you suspect your child, you know, you've seen something happen or you've seen some of these symptoms coming up, and the first thing you do is what? Bring them to the hospital? Bring them to your doctor? Yeah, it, uh, I mean, the one thing I will stress is that something like this little form is so important because relying on the parents and the coaches and the trainers to know that concussions are out there is, is critical because the kids don't want to tell you they've just had a concussion by and large. I mean, especially in football, is, you know, if they broke their arm, it's easy for them to say to their teammates, gee, look, I have a broken arm, I have to come out of the game. But if they just have a bad headache and they say to their teammates, oh, I don't want to play because I had a bad headache, that, you know, that's not so, right. so, uh, so it, macho, tough really, macho. right. <laughs> I didn't want to use the word macho, because it, it happens a lot in girls' spot, sports yeah, as well. Yeah, no, I can understand. But it, um, you know, a lot of kids are just not going to report it. So it's real crucial for the, again, for the parents to know that the concussions are out there and their child may have suffered one. A lot of concussions are mild and may not even require medical treatment. They just require rest. And one thing about a concussion is at the time someone has a concussion, you don't necessarily know how bad the concussion is. I mean, it's really the duration of symptoms. So one thing is just keeping track of it. And if the concussion symptoms are going on for more than about seven days, that's when we consider these complex concussions that really need to see a specialist. Okay, great. We're gonna take a break because I wanna come back and talk about how you actually test and figure out there's a concussion and then what do we do to correct it. We'll be right back. Please Stop the Roller Coaster, How Parents of Teenagers Can Smooth Out the Ride is a discussion group program designed for parents. 
In addition to the parents' book, the program can be complemented by secular, Christian, or Jewish leaders' guides. With expert advice, Please Stop the Roller Coaster will help parents improve communication with their teens to help them avoid risky behaviors. Learn more and download free excerpts at www.pleasestoptherollercoaster.com. We're back talking about kids and concussions with Dr. Mark Proctor. So the question of the day for me is, what, how do you test if a child has a concussion and then what do we do to treat it? So if the symptoms are persisting, the one thing you might want to consider after a while is to get a, a scan of the brain and make sure it's nothing more serious than a concussion. By definition, a concussion is going to have a normal brain CT or brain MRI because there's no actual damage structurally to the brain. It's this big release of, uh, of the neurons, of the neurotransmitters. So that being said, you still probably will consider getting a scan if the symptoms are persisting. Uh, we go down symptom checklists to really ask the kids, especially athletes who don't want to tell you, do you have headaches, are you having trouble sleeping, are you doing poorly in school, etc. Things that are just like simple yes, no, and they can't sort of cover up. Uh, computerized neuropsychological testing is becoming more and more prominent where you can sit down at a computer and take a test that takes about 15 minutes. And a lot of the schools are actually baseline testing their athletes at the beginning of the season. so that so that we can see yep. comparisons over time. Uh, but those are the things we, we look for. But again, the scans are not going to be very revealing. And what about prevention? What do we do to make sure this doesn't happen? Or can we? So prevention is, is tough because, you know, there are certain sports where, frankly, there's an inherent risk of concussion, you know. Well, something like boxing, gee, I mean, the, the goal of boxing is to give the other guy a concussion. So <laughs> you just, I mean... We, we never advocate boxing in kids. It's just the American Academy of Pediatrics is, yeah, that's no. taboo. Yeah. <laughs> but in football, which is actually very common, and hockey, which is very common, it, you know, there's no helmet that's going to perfectly guard you against a concussion, mm -hmm. because the helmet that would guard you against a concussion would be this big. You know, you just wouldn't be able to, to play in it. So uh, paying attention to the rules, I mean, that's why there's certain rules like you can't tackle with your head, and spear with your head, and things of that nature. Um, good physical fitness, I'm sure. Good physical fitness. Strong, avoid the other guy in the first place. <laughs> strong neck muscles, that, you know, so that helps absorb, absorb it. But it's really, it, it's the recognition by the coaches and the families that concussions are out there that's important. Because if you have one concussion, it's bad. If you have a second concussion while you're still symptomatic, it's potentially fatal. Potentially fatal. So what happens when a concussion goes undetected, or does it resolve itself on its own? Well, it, a concussion often will resolve itself on the own, on its own if they're not having recurrent concussions. But if you have a football player who's going out there with a concussion and keep its hit again and again and again, it can have very serious effects. There's something called second impact syndrome where a child gets, it really only, it's only seen in teenagers, not professionals, but they get uh, severe brain swelling and it's, it's fatal in 50% of the kids that get it. Only about 10 cases a year in the country, but, you know, that's why. Avoidable, though. It's avoidable by sure. keeping them out. That's what the motto has to be, when in doubt, sit them out. I hear you. Well, great advice, great information, something that has been around forever, of course, that as a parent you hear about and know so little about. So thank you so much for filling us in today. I want to thank our viewers for joining us as well. Please check out our website at mom-matters.com. You'll see information about all our previous shows, as well as some information about upcoming shows. So for Mom Matters, this is Alyssa DeVere giving you practical tips for more productive parenting.